Hey. How you doing? Joshua here. We're in Trojan horse mode today. Got our gopher garb. We're gonna hang out in a location I was at before and ironically I had a young man talk to me in such apparel the last time. So we're really getting into the festivities of being at Dinky Town in downtown Minneapolis, University of Minnesota. A lot of kids today getting out of class, getting ready to move. Got some kids here packing up their cars. You know, good luck to them. Hopefully they forget everything that they learned. And they pretty much got to start over. So we're going to hang out at this bus stop today. We, we were here last time. This bus stop comes by about every 10 minutes or so. And we got our signage here. Really trying to hit the kids today with uh, everything that NASA gives us is CGI. So it's pretty basic stuff for us in the woke up community and if you think that your government lies to you but you still believe NASA you're drinking diet woke okay so you need to put that aside kind of go on a fast and uh, really wake up because it's getting serious I'm gonna post a live stream that happened last night got over pretty late probably about 12 30 or 1 o'clock in the morning I had to go to bed but it was good stuff we had a globy come on and try to talk about the various uh, conundrums that they come across when dealing with such flatheads and uh, it was very interesting so I'll post that later or you can look it up right now brother Sanchez most recent live video was last night so it's a good couple of hours but it is good stuff I think it does help people understand the types of you know questions that Globies come across and they use their maths and everything that they learned in school with physics and you know chemistry and calculus and all those other things that you pay for and so it went on for quite a while uh, at times it was uncomfortable to watch but it was informative and I would highly suggest anybody who questions what I do and why I do it um, it is a bit of an aggr a more aggressive show than where I'm at so just be prepared for that um, they do mean well, they really do, um, but everybody, you know, just has their way of communicating and going about their business, and uh, I do respect the guys that do that panel and everything, so they are in their own way drawing people to Flat Earth and, and making them question the establishment and what we've been taught, so I would highly recommend you guys check that stream out yesterday. There will be another stream tonight, I'm sure. So when I get done with this later tonight, you know, that's usually what I do. You know, I just hang out and upload my videos and I'll comment here and there, but I don't want to take away from anything that they're discussing and talking about. I kind of want to just sit in the background because that's their thing, you know. Um, this is my thing. This is what I do. This is how I feel called to uh, draw people away from what we've been taught and kind of reprogram them, scramble their brains a little bit, shuffle the deck. And I think I'm going to be able to do a good job doing that today. I'm, I got my uh, gopher gear on. I am wearing long sleeves. I have uh, scrawny arms, and I don't want to burn, because it's supposed to be very, very beautiful today and tomorrow. Um, and I got something really special planned on Saturday. We're going to go to St. Paul all day and uh, go to some events and really uh, challenge people when they're coming in and out of those events 
and uh, hopefully wake some people up in the long run. So just really appreciate everybody joining, whether you're live or, or later this afternoon, when you got nothing to do. Because uh, live streaming and watching live streams on YouTube is seriously better than watching TV. Um, once you pass all those TV shows and the movies and stuff, if you can get over all that, and you really want to get into the nitty gritty of what's going on, um, I would just uh, check it out, you know? Check out some live streams on YouTube. Pardon you. And we're going to hang out here at this bus stop. And let's see what happens. Give her a go. Be here for a couple hours and then we'll change scenery. There, are gonna, there is going to be some traffic here because a lot of these kids are moving out of this dorm here. And uh, just kind of... Let's see what happens. NASA. Wow, you know, it's almost like I was meant to be here, man. How you doing? Yeah. You just coming back from school or? Coming back from finals and stuff. Yeah, sure. How are your finals? You doing well in class and stuff? Yeah. Your mom's proud, huh? Mm -hmm. Right on. Are you uh, going to stay here over the summer, or are you yes. going back home? I will be staying here. Okay. You live in the area, then, so you can visit family pretty easily? Uh, my family's from out of state. Oh, okay. Where are you all from? Uh, Illinois. Illinois. Right on, man. What uh, drew you to Minnesota instead of just hanging out there? Uh, of all the schools I was looking at, this was the, one of the only ones that had astrophysics and aerospace engineering, because at the time I did not know which of them to choose. Beautiful. Speaking of aerospace engineering, I happen to notice your very unorthodox attacker. Yeah, it is kind of thought-provoking, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. What do you think about that statement? Satellites don't exist. Utter fallacy. It is. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty bold statement, but I wouldn't be standing here if I didn't feel confident to, to prove to you that they don't actually exist. What do you think about that? I think that we have nothing to gain from this kind of <laughs> Oh, yeah? No matter how logically I presents it, no, yeah. how, no matter how logically either of us presents our views, uh -huh. you, will be, you will be incapable of persuading the other one Uh, maybe, or maybe not. Um, how old are you? You mind if I ask? 20. 20, okay. So, where would you come up with the idea that satellites exist? Because, among other, many other things, the device in your hand... Okay, that yeah, makes sense. Satellites. Sure, yeah. What about anything else? Like, have you seen a satellite with your own physical eyes? In person, yes. Several in museums and whatnot. Okay. Of course, the idea of satellites is that they've been launched up into space beyond the range of the visible eye. But certainly they're attainable. International Space Station, we've had people go there and exist in conditions irre irreplicable in terrestrial circumstances. Okay. So, International Space Station, pretty big satellite. It is, yeah. Um, they send, you know, it costs, it costs us $80 million to send one astronaut up there. So that's per seat. That's a, that's a spendy road trip. Well, it's not a road trip. You're not going up there for fun. You're going up there to do scientific investigation. Oh. Well, <clears throat> have you ever watched the live stream before? Watched the live stream before. Of uh, the ISS. Okay. Well, I mean, you're a NASA guy, you know, so I figured you'd watch it as much as I do, because I watch it a lot. And uh, it seems that the only experiments that they really do is, like, making water bubbles and putting food coloring in them and, you know, stuff like that. Well, I, I've kind of seen that before. those are the experiments to conduct for the Oh. I mean, obviously, they do things like such as growing plants in space to see how low, how microgravity affects the growth of the and they themselves are test subjects in the sense of... So science. they show that, though? I mean, I'm just trying to understand. Like, they show us the plants. Yes. Have you seen the plants? I haven't gone digging for it. Oh, okay. I... So I'm, I'd be interested to see that, I guess. You know, like, if they're blowing, growing plants, what kind of plants do you think they're growing up there? Do you think they're growing marijuana plants up there? No, food crops, most likely. Oh, okay. You can look it up. Hopefully, right? Poppy seeds, maybe? No. no? Not to my knowledge. Okay. But they do bring, like... How much do you think it costs to bring, like... 
packaging and stuff up there because it's pretty spendy. Like you know, each pound costs what a couple hundred thousand dollars. Something like that. But it's, like all, that. it's all worthwhile in the sense of advancing scientific knowledge and working to progress humanity beyond this singular planet. Huh? Did you know that they one astronaut wore the New England jersey and another astronaut wore the Challenger to New England in the Super Bowl before the Super Bowl was even played? Isn't that kind of weird? So they both, so two astronauts wore the teams that played in the most recent Super Bowl before the Super Bowl even happened. What does that have to do with it? I don't know, that's just a really bizarre thing. Like, you know, that's really a huge coincidence to know who would be playing in the Super Bowl before it happened, and then you had... What presumes they know that? I don't know, I'm just, you know, just thinking out loud, I guess. Per chance, it was just, they just both were their favorite team. Yeah, maybe. What a coincidence. What about, like, if, you know, you were to bring, I don't know, like, a monkey suit up into the ISS? How much do you think that costs us to pay to have a monkey suit be brought up there? Like, $250,000? What do you mean by monkey suit? Like, they literally wore a monkey suit during a live stream of the ISS to, like, joke around and stuff. Do you think that's... I fail to see your point here. What does it matter what it costs? Well, that's a lot of money to wear a monkey suit. Not a fraction of 1% of our budget is spent on NASA in space exploration. I argue it should be more. Okay. Well, I guess my point is, is uh, does this look like a picture of a real satellite? And that's probably an artist's conception to depict what a satellite looks like. I You're can, right. I can yep. certainly find lots of pictures of real satellites to show you. I can too. I found this one here. This is about, about the length of my research. That I kind of kept hitting a roadblock. What does that look like? It's a, yeah, where is it though? Where is it? Yeah. It's on the ground as a physical demonstration to people what satellites that are in orbit look like. I, okay, so this is may or may not have been done by Bill Nye and Neil deGrasse Tyson. Like on a weekend, they got like a bunch of Milwaukee's best and well, put this together. Well, certainly found the image. You can certainly find the source of the image and who made this satellite construction. Okay, so this is on the ground and it may or may not be a real working satellite, right? But then they show us this and it's CGI. Have you ever heard yeah, I have. Yep. Yeah, it's called... Artist's depiction. Okay, and then if you Google image satellites in space, what if all you get are CGI artist depictions? Like, everything. Like, it's all CGI, man. Well, I could Google pictures of space wallpapers, and a lot of them will be CGI or drawn. No, this is... I'm talking about, like, from the official NASA website. All you get is satellites from a third-person perspective, CGI. Space Telescope is more concerned with observing all the cosmos as opposed huh. to taking selfies. It would make sense. Funny you bring up Hubble. Do you know what the airplane called Sophia is? Yes, it is a <clears throat> high-altitude airplane which has a telescope that allows it to perform a similar function as Hubble. Do you know how similar the specs are? Like, it's really coincidental that <clears throat> the Hubble telescope and Sophia are really, really, really close to being identical. Huh. Funny the fact that Hubble exists yeah, that's what they tell us. That's that's what they tell us, right? So I guess I guess my point is is when you Google image Earth from space, you also all just get CGI images. Not true. It is actually true, man. I'm sorry to tell you. I actually got um, a picture of it right here. This is from the Epic camera. This is our most recent picture of Earth from space. What about this? And this is CGI, dude. How do you know? This is CGI, man. You have to explain how you know that CGI. If you knew it was CGI for certain, you'd be able to demonstrate to people that CGI. Well, um, I think somebody has debunked this, and it actually says the word sex if you tip it upside down and you look to the to the right there. Yeah. I see it. Well, let me show you here, bud. So right there, it I says see. sex in it. No, it doesn't. So, you'll have to Google that, and it might be a little bit more clear for you, because this is new information for you. But what about these two images here, man? What size is America supposed to be? Well, it depends on where you take the picture now. This one doesn't look necessarily real. That one seems somewhat... This conversation is more important. Yeah, I know, bud, because everything that NASA gives us is CGI, man, and you're living in a deception. And you need to wake up, please. 
you are aware that gravity is not real, right? Why, Joe? Gravity. Yeah, the pen weighs more than the air around it, bud. That's why helium breaks the law of gravity all the time, doesn't it? How is gravity not powerful enough weight to hold down... A, weight is a function of... Weight is the effect of gravity upon mass. So the fact that the pen weighs more is because it has more mass than the air around it. Okay. Therefore, it has more of the greater force of gravity. Okay, do you believe in a creator god? Yes. Okay. So you're telling me that gravity is more powerful than god? Okay. But I just explained to you that the pen weighs more than the air around it and it falls to the ground, but you give it a name and it's called gravity, right? Gravity is just a theory, man. We've done, calcu we've done infinite many calculable experiences. Because of gravity, we we're able to accurately model the, how the planets move around the sun. But how can you accurately model something that you've, we've never been to before? We've never been to space. We've been to space. No, man, there's we haven't. There's some astronauts who would gladly tell you otherwise. We have... No, actually, there's not. There's a video, actually, called Astronauts Gone Wild. And a majority of the astronauts who claim to have landed on the moon refuse to swear on the Bible that they landed on the moon. I can make a video saying that the sky is green and purple on Tuesdays. That doesn't make it true. Well, today's Thursday, so it's actually... Regardless, yeah. it quite stands. But it's but you do how understand, do you explain, like... How do you explain the fact that we have left detectors on the moon that have been able to transmit information to the moon? That actually happened before. That happened in 1946 by a guy named John Bray. He started the whole Earth to Moon to Earth thing. So that was in 1946. That was about 23 years before we landed on the moon where what you're saying we left. Regardless. Well, I'm just saying, man, you got to kind of try to be consistent with... I think you kind of kind of come down to Earth. You went in orbit. Well, no, man, because you can't go into orbit because gravity doesn't exist, man. How high from the surface do you have to be in the atmosphere before space kicks in and gravity is no longer possible? Gravity exists everywhere within the universe. So it does? Yeah. Is space a vacuum? Arguably, although there is the interstellar medium, so there's a very diffuse amount of particles in Okay. So when a rocket takes off from here, it's pushing off air, right? To propel itself? It ejects gas from its, from its thrusters, which causes it to go forward okay. based on Newton's laws, which include gravity, by the way. So why do you have to put fins on a rocket? Aerodynamics. Help you get through the atmosphere. Okay, so how did they get back from the moon to Earth when there were no fins on the moon lander? Heat shields. They put heat shields on the, on the shuttle and it entered in. Heat shields facing, designed to protect it. But how did they get 239,000 miles from the moon back to Earth without any fins, man? Because space and propellant. Is, space is essentially a vacuum. I mean, <clears throat> that's technically not true, but lots of things are technically true. It sounds like there's a lot of theories and technically not trues with space and all that. It sounds like a big theory, man. Wouldn't you kind of agree, man, if everything that they give us is CGI, moon... Everything they give us is not CGI. It is, man. I wish you would look into it and believe and not... I've looked into it. I've looked up it. Could you look into it and not, like, go into it with a closed mind, then? Because it sounds like they're... You're the one whose mind is closed. Closed to the fact that science is real and marvelous. Do you believe that I went to public school and, like, I went and I believed the same thing that you did two years ago? Well, it kind of does, because you're talking to me as if I didn't experience what you're experiencing right now at 20 years old, man. So, and, like, so my experience on Earth and what I've seen and heard and tested and everything has led me to a conclusion that we're being lied to by NASA. So it caused you to fall into no unorthodoxy, then? What? That, but that's not unorthodoxy, man. Maybe you're being lied to in your public school. Unorthodoxy, by definition, is contrary to the general vernacular accepted since I... And part of a majority, which insists that gravity. But is that real. doesn't mean that it's right, does it? That means orthodoxy does not. Although orthodoxy contains a connotation of rightness, the fact that you are unorth, you are objectively have an unorthodox opinion because it is the opinion not considered right or proper by the majority. Do you have your own thoughts, or do you just are you just spouting regurgitation of, from tests that you remember and memorization? Okay, because it doesn't, it just sounds like you're very robotic, man, and I hope that you can kind of peel away from what, you know, you're a part of right now, and into, just... Are we going to get into Descartes? No, I'm just, I'm just making a, a suggestion that you just kind of step away from, you know, like, the school and the religion of scientism, 
and you just maybe have an open mind that we're being lied to about NASA. And that's why I'm here, is to just inform people that, hey, you might want to just question what they're doing. Is there anything that the government has ever done in your eyes that you don't trust? Like, like dropping, a bomb, dropping a bomb at Hiroshima, which is... No, I mean, like, that you found out they lied about. Um, there's, have you ever heard of the Watergate scandal? Okay. There's right there kind of instance. Although, so, do you remember when the Watergate scandal happened? That was 73. Okay. What, what, what happened the four years before that? It was 1969, and we landed on the moon. Yeah. So, do you think that's kind of a weird coincidence that... The, one of the biggest lying presidents of all time who actually got convicted of being a liar, but, you know, he was just so happened to be in the White House during the times that we landed on the moon. Isn't that kind of coincidental? Yes, it is coincidental. Okay. So that doesn't, you wouldn't connect the dots and say that, yeah, maybe landing on the moon and him kind of are both lies? Because if Dick is a liar, then that means that NASA might be lying about landing on the moon? You think that could be? I don't think it's connected. No. You don't think that those two come together? No. Because, based on my knowledge, those two are, not, are things that are not related. Really okay. What about anything that's happened in your lifetime? Do you question anything that you've been able to witness yourself, in a sense, and you kind of be like, oh, wow, I can't believe that happened, and then you look into it and you find out that our government lied about it? Is there anything that would cross your mind? No. Can I just ask you, what do you think about 9-11 then? It was a travesty of a terrorist attack. <clears throat> okay. Do you know, um, like, what were some of the things that we remember seeing that blew up or got hit by an airplane or something? I'm not going to continue this conversation because by your theories, you dishonor all those who died that day. Okay, well, Building 7, man. Do you know about Building 7? Please research Building 7, man. You might wake up that way. And NASA's a fraud, man. Quite a few people moving out of here. I think it's a uh, moving day. Got their finals done early. <clears throat> some some schools up north are getting done on June first, or the first week of June at least. And so. That sounded like the conversation that they had last night. You know? Just... 20 years old. And if you haven't researched 
or looked into 9-11, this is the four-month warning, if you will, for another anniversary of one of the biggest hoaxes and lies of this generation. He's 20 years old, so he was, you know, he was around well, five, six, seven years old. That, that can leave a, a permanent mark, so if you grew up with that and you believe the 9-11 Commission report and everything that the uh, GOV said happened that day, then what do you got to look for, right? But a lot of people don't know about Building 7. So if you have not <clears throat> looked into 9-11 and Building 7 and what happened there, please look it up today sometime. Please get informed so that you can have an idea of what these people who are in control are capable of and how they lie to us all the time. But hey, what do I know? It's just my opinion. It's just my opinion. Thermite. Look that up. What hit the Pentagon, you know? If you believe an airplane hit the Pentagon, then... Please investigate that more. Even when reporters showed up and they were ignorant to the information that they were supposed to divulge, a couple of news reporters actually said that I do not see any remnants of an airplane anywhere near the Pentagon. Funny how you can't find those clips anymore. One of the debut four crisis actors, I'm sure, kind of jump started some propaganda for everyone to fall in line with. Subliminal messaging. Thirsty, huh? The young man uh, who was on <clears throat> last night, Lewis, he did not thoroughly investigate 9-11. Had to have been something like 19, 20, early 20s for sure. Not a lot of people do. Not a lot of people have it's never even crossed their mind to think that the establishment would want to hurt firefighters. You know, what do they know? What do firefighters know, right? They're just going in there. That's their job. And then you're not going to pay for their health care when they get older right now? Some real good men died that day, trying to save people's lives, or may or may not have been any lives to be saved, who knows, but people had to have been hung, hanging out there, I mean, people really died there. How many? I don't know. But they don't give a rip. Plus, they work with the occult. So massive amounts of human sacrifices just makes it even more powerful, especially on the consciousness of American citizens, to know that such an event happened here, which may or may not have anything to do with all the fear-mongering about airplanes and airliners and being told to pee in a cup. I 
I have yet to see if there's a Twins game this weekend. It's going to be a really, really nice weekend. And so if there is, I'd love to go there and hang out for a Twins game. Probably after the game. <clears throat> or show up there during it. I mean, I don't give a rip about the game. But just try to get people while they're coming out. And uh, speaking of baseball, Chris Berman's wife died. If you were listening earlier, a couple episodes a while back, I kind of talked about numbers and important numbers to kind of just keep an eye out for when the establishment puts headlines out there. If you're not familiar with who Chris Berman is, he was a anchor on ESPN pretty much since the day of its inception in the early 80s. I think they say that he started it out of his like trailer or something like that. You know, that may or may not be true. Maybe he's just an MK Ultra mind control slave cuz coincidentally enough his wife died in a car accident 33 years later after their marriage. What a coincidence. 33 years after they were married. And Chris Berman, his whole name, together equals the number 33, which is really bizarre. Probably has nothing to do with any secret society or anything like that. So, just kind of my opinion, just an observation. So look into that when you can. Chris Berman's wife dead. 33 years of marriage. If I ever die in a car accident, please investigate that. Or just in general, I guess. <laughs> it's a nice ride right there. And if somebody gave it to me, I'd probably sell it, buy a boat, and invite a bunch of people to go to Antarctica. Live stream it. Well, we're getting shot at by paid pirates because the establishment won't actually come after us in military garb. They'll probably just hire some pirates to take over. You cannot, as a civilian, go to Antarctica, which may or may not be a ring like a pizza around all the land and water, and that's what's keeping us in. So if you want to go south from any country that you live, you want to go there as a civilian, good luck. But you know it's going to be a good day when the first guy you talk to has a NASA hat on and Pokemon on a shirt. If you are familiar with augmented reality and Pokemon, just be aware that that's just a primer to get us used to such technology so that then we can't tell the difference between real and CGI, just like that young man can. <clears throat> you know, you just, you can't argue with people about that, you just, you just gotta show them and just say, hey bud, like, this is CGI though, man. She looks happy.
hope everybody else is having a good day today. It is Thursday where I'm at. It's about 1 p.m. Central Standard Time. I don't know what I want to eat today. So we still got about an hour and 15 minutes or so before this first segment will be done, but we really want to just kind of hang out here and hang out here at the bus stop. I'm gonna guess that guy loves the Michigan Wolverines. You know, to spend money like that on your car for a football team. You know? And then to find out it's fake, what would you do? What would you do? I would like to challenge some people with measurements and how far away the sun is, how fast we're moving through outer space, stuff like that. I'd like to see if they know that kind of information. So it can really start to process. Like it, We're supposedly going 45,000 miles an hour. We're following the sun, right? And so our solar system is going 515,000 miles an hour. Why don't the constellations ever change? You know? And one thing that I did look up is, where are we going? Where is the sun pointing to? You know, so I did look that up last night. And we're going towards Lambda Hercules. L-A-M-B-D-A, Hercules, Lambda Hercules. So that's where we're pointed, so if you find that constellation, that's apparently, you know, where we're headed. So whatever that means, I haven't, I didn't really get into the meaning behind it and the reasoning and stuff, it just got to be too late, and I was like, well, this is actually interesting, because now I have an idea of where we're being told that we're headed but why you know I think it was 370 light years away or something like that so it's gonna be a while till we get there you know it's always these time 
constraints, right? They always put us in these time constraints, but we're not now... Now we're not going to go to the moon and, or to Mars until 2033. You know, we have the technology to go to, to Mars, but we don't have technology to go 239,000 miles away just to do it. You know, maybe that could be a starting off point. But uh, it's just unfortunate that uh, people read that. And they're like, okay, I can't wait till 2033 to go to Mars. What a coincidence. It's so far away. I may or may not be alive then. And then we'll forget about it 20 years later, and then it'll be another 15 years. It'll be some lie about how it's being delayed like the Viasat satellite was delayed to launch on June 1st. So keep an eye out for Viasat being launched by France. That just gave me a, a vibe turned around and he was just eyeballing me got them that staring contest I see people in the reflection of my phone so <laughs> I can't. they don't know that I don't think but I certainly do keep tabs on where people are at when they walk away from me and I point my phone in the opposite direction and then I watch the reflection on my phone See if they want to come at me or something, right? Don't destroy my world view, man. I love outer spaces. I love it. And that's what sucks, you know? People can't let that go, you know? Just let it... Big deal. It's outer space, man. It makes you just so insignificant. You know? We're just a speck, right? You're not just a speck. I think the establishment knows that we're starting to wake up and realize that we're not just a speck and you know they constantly have their uh, uh, their live streams going on right now to they had a, a live stream of an interview of that guy who's with uh, Peggy on the ISS Yesterday I saved it to my playlist on my YouTube channel, so I'm going to check that out later. See what kind of crazy experiments he was doing for the sheep that think that water bubbles are just the most amazing thing. You know, they just do that. They just do parlor tricks, guys. Come on now. They're doing parlor tricks to hypnotize you into believing that they're in outer space. When they're actually probably on a zero-G airplane called the Vomit Comet. Please look up the Vomit Comet and compare the two. Compare the Vomit Comet with the interactions that they have on the ISS stage. It's all green screen, guys. It's better you find out now than later. Just help that, let that process. I mean, really. Gotta just let that process for a little bit.
finals. Just memorization, that's all it is. You could just try to apply what you're learning in school and try to debunk Flat Earth. You might become a Flat Earther. You know? That's the thing. I mean, people just... It's either A, they don't want to let go of it, and they want to hang on to that fantasy of outer space, or B, they don't want to admit that they believe stuff on faith because they've never done it themselves, and they won't admit that it's a religion. So I... It's kind of... I feel like it's one of those two. Like, they don't want to admit that they're in a religion, and that they're basing a lot of their stuff on what other people say and videos that can be easily easily manipulated but as you grow up here in the society especially America you just you naturally trust authority right you would never it would never cross your mind that these people would lie to us And then 9-11 happened. And then no planes. And then vaccines and GMOs and chemtrails. And, and they're poisoning our children and our youth. And uh, people are okay with that. I'm not okay with that anymore. Like these guys, like, you know, mockery is easy with another guy, you know, it's always good to, it's always good to talk and not ever engage anybody, just talk amongst your friends, but, <laughs> but when you find out that everything NASA gives us is CGI, and you believe CGI over Guardians of the Galaxy 2, it can be hard to discern real from fake. It's hard to humble yourself and realize that you may be being lied to. But these guys would never go into a Google Hangout <laughs> and talk about the globe and flat earth. You know, so that's why we're here. Just gotta shake them up a little bit. Satellites aren't real. You know, he laughs, but his mockery will take him in a direction that he will be shown the truth, and then he'll have to decide when there isn't the herd mentality.
If you think the whole vaccine scare in Minneapolis recently is organic, please critically think. Please don't use that as an opportunity to fall into fear and get your kids vaccinated. If anybody should get vaccinated, it's people like me, cystic fibrosis, terminal illness, I'm scared, you know, I need help. I don't give a rip about vaccines. I would rather juice, eat healthy as I can, you know, I fall, I'm not perfect. Take my vitamins, have good thoughts, you know, have a good thought life. Don't fall into the fear. Don't fall into traps, psychological warfare that they give us. You know, you'll be all right then. Because there's no amount of mercury that can be put in the human body that is safe. You know, would you ever crack open your thermometer and just put mercury in your body? Or your son or your daughter who was just born? If you think it's okay to put mercury in a three-year-old, you know, that's your opinion. I don't agree with it. I would never do it. So just do your own research. You know, look it up. Check out what, vaccine, what vaccines have in them, the ingredients. You know, they may or may not contain dead baby fetuses. Aborted babies, that's a massive multi-billion dollar industry dead aborted baby body parts so if you're if you're pro-choice that's great you know that's what your conclusions have led you to at this moment but if you're not familiar with the trafficking of dead aborted babies I would really encourage you to do your research about that and, you know, maybe that might change your mind. You know, yeah, pro-choice is cool, but I would say to the lady outside of the abortion clinic, are you getting a discount on your abortion today? And the young lady might say, well, what do you mean? No, I'm, I'm not. And then you just say, well, did you know that when you abort your baby that the establishment is going to take that baby and then sell the parts off? The brain, the heart, fingers, the eyes. So they'll probably make, you know, what? I mean, even low ball, high ball, $50,000 a baby. Especially if it's at the 22 weeks where they consider legal. I'm glad I wasn't aborted, that's all I gotta say. Could have been. You know, with technology nowadays, you never know. Doctor could say, hey, you know, your baby might have, may or may not have cystic fibrosis when it's born. You wanna, you wanna deal with that? Like, you wanna seriously, like, deal with that? Come on. Think critically, young lady. You don't wanna deal with that. You know, the doctor will persuade the mother. I don't know, maybe that's just my opinion, I don't know. There might be some good doctors out there. Encouraging doctors, but I'm just kinda going off my own personal feeling of the agendas and eugenics. Agenda 2030. So they don't want kids born with terminal illness running around, taking up resources and money. You know, that's just, that's just it. Like, people will go down that bunny trail, but then when they're presented with flat earth, they say, I'm crazy, right? We can agree on just about everything. No planes, GMOs, chemtrails, contrails, reptilians, transgender... But then you bring up flat earth and then, well, no, I gotta, I gotta step away, man. This is too much. You're crazy and, uh, 
Then you're left paying the bill for the coffee, and then they walk away. This is about where we live, guys. This is about where we live, where we come from, how they've lied to us this whole time. We're being lied to about everything. Love these roads around here. Minnesota roads are the best right after winter every year. I think it's cancer to cars. I think the establishment loves having roads like this so that it's this perpetual cycle of having to get new tires, struts, AAA, broken car. Oh, why did your tire blow up on the highway? Well, I don't know, because there's this manhole size divot on a major interstate. That might be why. But you can't sue the city, right? You're going to sue the city over a flat tire because they won't repave the entire streets? You know, but we give $52 million a year to an asshole and all we get are CGI images. But I say positive, I mean, as, as, as much as somebody might think that I'm not happy and not positive, I am. That's why I'm here. So, I'm over that. You know, I'm, I'm past all that. There's no reason for me to sit in the five stages and not move on. Like, we're already Dunbar. So we're excited to, to move on and inform people that satellites don't exist. There goes some firemen right there. Investigate Building 7. A lot of good firemen died that day. If you think that the only buildings that were destroyed were the two towers in the Pentagon, then where's Building 7 come in? What happened there? You've never investigated Building 7? It is the four-month anniversary of 9-11, so just be aware that the biggest hoax perpetrated on the American public in this generation is 9-11, and then the Vietnam War, and then the moon landing. call yourself a person who's awake and you distrust everything that the government tells you but you love NASA you are not awake and I challenge you to investigate the claims that you see from me see that you're here from me or anybody else with a like-minded ideas would say about the moon landing and building seven. Hey, honey, you dropped something there. Thank you. Yep. It's just too nice of a day. I mean, I don't even know what I would be doing right now. Sitting on my butt, playing 2K17 and listening to YouTube videos. That's what I used to do. That's what I used to do. And then you just start to wean yourself away from that stuff, you know? I, did, I just don't, I, I guess I'm bored, to be honest with you. There's no excitement. I mean, you just go to work all the time, do your thing at work, and come home, and you got three, four, five, six hours to do whatever you want. 
So find something that you're passionate about doing that would encourage and help others. Volunteer your time. That doesn't sound healthy for that guy's van. $500 a shoe for Big Baller. Would you pay $495 for a pair of shoes? $495 for a pair of basketball shoes. And how does he even get that contract? He's got to be like, what, 19 or something? 20? What do you think that you, what are some things that you think that a person has to do to get that kind of contract? What do you think somebody like Chris Berman has to do if his wife got into an accident that may or may not have been caused by somebody driving that car that just so happened to know exactly where the intersection was that she was going to cross? or wherever she was. But if you're in the establishment and a family friend or family member is reported to die at th and the number in which is related to that death is the number 33, your radar should be up if you're woke. That guy's doing legal. He must cause an accident. A lot of people graduating here pretty soon, too. So if you tell them that space is fake and everything CGI, where did their education go to? What did it all go to? Alright, well, I don't know what happened there, but signal couldn't connect. Somebody must have shot down the ground tower that's my phone is communicating to. So we're just going to walk over here, change up the scenery here for the last hour. Go down to this Bridges dorm room, hang out in front of here. We're still on the main strip of where classes and dorm rooms are on, so we'll still run across quite a bit of kids. Hey guys, so we're back after that interruption. We're gonna walk down to this place that we had that conversation with that young man in a similar 
yellow shirt. We got our gopher garb on today. We're in Trojan mode. Kids probably think I go to school here. And a little secret, I just turned 36 a couple of days ago. So, I certainly do give that impression that I probably still go here. Stay in the sun. This, there's anything that I complain about Minnesota? It's the wind. It's just unnecessary. I don't, I don't get it. I don't know where it comes from or where it goes, but like the Holy Spirit, it goes to where it needs to be. So we're going to hang out here at this corner. This is called... The bridges, there will be some kids walking back and forth here, nice places too, nice apartments for kids to hang out at, I'm sure this place isn't cheap, I'm sure that it's not included in your tuition, so it must be nice to have a dorm room like that, just a couple of blocks from your classes. Wind tunnel. It's over here too. Just want to stay in the sun too. Why they all stay the same is because we're heading towards this constellation area called Lambda Hercules. So they're all spinning around, but the North Star always stays above us, right? So is that, and they're saying that like if you look up this, man, I don't know how it is over there, but, or how it sounds. But, say in regards to where our sun is taking us, if you will, is we're going towards Lambda Hercules, and we're actually going out of our galaxy. Kind of like, you know, we're underwater and we're going towards the surface of something. So... 
whatever that means, wherever we're going, however we get there, it's a lie. Now, is something coming towards us? I don't know. You know, the occult like to switch things around. As above, so below, mirror, duality. So maybe something's coming towards us. What is coming towards us? I don't know. Wish this wind would go to Iowa. That would be nice. Definitely gonna have to change locations and get some more buildings to die down this wind. So I don't know, I thought that was fascinating. I kind of stumbled upon that because I have told people that we're hurtling billions of miles through space in no direction, but it does seem like they do give us a direction, so Lambda Hercules is where we're going. And where where they get you know, your planet Nibiru and Planet X and all that stuff, wherever that's coming. Are we going towards that area? Are they are they gonna display something in the sky that would look like a giant planet that's near us, like another uh, celestial body bigger than the moon? You know, the moon's only about, what, 50 miles away? I'm sorry, 50 miles wide. 239,000 miles away. The joke is, is what's closer? New York and California, or when you're in New York, you're looking at the sun. Because if they say that the sun is only about 3,000 miles away, then technically the sun is closer than California, if you're in New York. So are they going to project a fake sun, fake planet of some kind up in the sky that would that would resemble the pictures that they're giving us about Planet X and the Biru? <clears throat> I don't know. I've thought about that though in the last couple of days, especially with this information about what constellation we're headed towards and how they came to that conclusion. I, I don't know. I will display an interesting uh, story, if you will, that is on the Harvard, oh no, Stanford website. It's on a Stanford website, and it, it talks about how fast we're going and where we're going. It's called Guide to the Galaxy, Stanford, so if you can look that up on your own if you want to check that out. Something interesting I heard yesterday on the way home is a couple of days ago a flat earth dating website opened up. So I'll tell you that flat earth dating website opened up. If you can guess what the name of this flat earth website is, I'll give you a package of plain M&Ms. Flat Earth dating website. So how do you think that's going to go? Because I know I've been on Match, you know. I've been on some of these dating websites, and really all you get is you get mostly spam from bots. 
that, in my opinion, the website itself allows to collect money from you in a third-party type of way. Because if I ran a website, I just I wouldn't have bots. It just wouldn't fly. If someone reported a bot was talking to them, that's deleted, you know. But they don't get deleted, and uh, it seems like that website allows bots to be on their uh, website. But it's a good idea, because, I mean, you got so many people who understand the concept of Flat Earth and don't believe in the globe anymore. And <laughs> that can be really difficult to have a relationship with somebody. Because that's, uh, that's a big topic. It kind of talks about where we live, you know, and what we're doing here, and it, it can be uh, a tipping point for why we're, why we're being lied to all the time. And so when you got a dating website for people who are like-minded, who have looked into such lies and deceptions by the establishment, it would be nice to meet a significant other who's interested in those things that you have studied and then you can build off of each other, come up with a game plan of how to help wake other people up. Because that's really what it's all about now. You know, it's all about waking other people up. You can't sit on this knowledge anymore. You can't hide that knowledge from people. That's what they're doing to us. They're suppressing knowledge from us. So why would we do that to people? Our own human counterparts, you know? Brothers and sisters in humanity. Help wake them up. In your little way. However, whatever you feel comfortable with doing, sharing information about Flat Earth. You know, don't vandalize anything to leave a message or anything, but... You know, be tactful. Try to understand what you're good at. If you're good at, uh, you know, creating websites or YouTube videos or whatever, then then do that. If you're good at talking on the radio and have that, you know, do that listen to what other people are doing right now and kind of take a little bit from here and there and create your own persona or how you want to wake people up. Be original. You know, be yourself. Don't copy and paste, but investigate things on your own. Even just to, to share the stuff that you already know, it may sound redundant and you feel like you got to go over and over stuff. But you gotta understand, you gotta meet these people where they're at. They're not gonna understand. They're not gonna be able to put two and two together within a two hour video or street interview or Google Hangout. You know, it's gonna take some time for it to really sink in. And, and some people just won't give a rip. You know, it might take a couple of, a couple of weeks or so. And people are busy. They don't feel like it's important. It's not a priority for them. You know, so just show them your own personal testimony of why it's important to you and hopefully some people will see that and uh, have an open mind, which is the biggest thing. As I hope that people who do come to the blogs and the hangouts and to where I'm at, they just have an open mind about everything NASA giving us being CGI. It's just all fake, man.
you know? And then you find out that all of the communication done on Earth is ground towers and fiber optics. When all people see in the sky are just lights flickering back and forth, and then they say that they saw a satellite, you know? What else could it be, right? So people just assume that the light in the sky is a satellite. Then you find out that everything is CGI and it's all just a big sham. Then you can slowly start letting stuff go. What's going on, man? What do you think about that statement? It's a little odd. Yeah. Just a little bit. A little bit. What do you think about the picture, though? The picture's cool. Yeah? Yeah. You think that's a real satellite in space right now? Uh, it could be. Could be? It doesn't look like it, but it certainly could be. Okay. It's a little photoshopped. It is photoshopped. It is actually, the whole thing is photoshopped. It's a CGI. Oh, no way. Yeah. Did you know that uh, if you Google image Earth from space, all you get also is CGI images? Really? Everything is CGI. It's all photoshopped and they admit it on their website. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, well, if you kind of just look at this guy here, um, I don't want to take up too much of your time, but just something to think about. I just want to point out which one of these is supposed to be the right size of America. That would be, I can go home. Door number A? Yeah. Yeah, they're actually all of them are CG, CGI, man. Really? So, do you see the inconsistencies of the size of America and Definitely. stuff? Yeah. Can I just encourage you to check that out, man, and just look at yeah, for sure. the information that's out there and available to us? Yeah, for sure. Um, I don't know, what do you do typically when you're home or like, what, what, what are some things, I guess, let me just kind of shoot from the hip. What are some things about our government that you found out they lied about? I guess I don't really like pay too much attention to the government. I mean, I'm like kind of a pretty busy guy. I, yeah, you're in but, school, man. And... Um, I don't know. I guess I would just say that I mean, they've lied about a lot of things. What's one thing just in this generation that kind of has a red flag on it? Uh, I think just like probably that I get the bag. Like, exact thing with like saying that. Sure. Did you know that the Patriot Act was created just a couple days after 9-11? Yeah. And it's over a thousand pages. Yeah. That must be, like, you got to be really going to town if you're going to write that up. Yeah, I mean, like, I don't have the whole time, to, I don't have the time to read the whole thing. A lot of people don't. Right? What about Building 7? Building 7? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Is that kind of a red flag? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people who... Do distrust our government? They actually haven't looked into 9/11 very much, really? and they they have never really looked into Building Seven, and that's kind of a sore thumb. If you can really start you on a rabbit hole, you know, and follow that white rabbit, yeah. and you're like, wow, that's crazy. No, it's, I think it's I think it's a little ridiculous that I think our government just needs to be a little bit more like straight up. Yeah. To be honest with us. Yeah, I think so, and I think the time is coming. You know, so can I just encourage you to check out this uh, YouTube channel and sure. just have an open mind. You know, there's a lot of stuff that's going to be said that you're not going to agree with, but I'm just here to try to kind of help open the minds of you know college kids that we may or may not be living on a flat plane yeah, right now. Yeah, so, Joshua, Joshua Alex, Alex. Nice yeah, good to meet you too, man. For sure, I'll check out that video. Great, man. Appreciate awesome. it. Yeah, and I'll see you around, man. All right, Stay safe man. out there. Yeah, thank you. See, when the light turns green and he's ready to go away, right away. Singularity right there, that's when it was meant to be. You know, so we're just hanging out, letting people know that, uh...
satellites don't exist. That's pretty much pretty much the go-to. He was pretty receptive. It's great to see. It's great to see. He just pulled up right next to me, so I figured why not talk to him, you know? He's just standing here too. He had to wait for the light to turn anyways, so sorry for the uh, commotion here. I gotta get my periodicals in order. Uh, got a couple more minutes. I'm gonna hang out here for a couple more minutes and then we're gonna go get something to eat and then change locations. Not sure what I want for food. There's a sushi spot up the road. I think I want Asian food today. I think I'm gonna go Asian on the bit. So not as many interactions as we'd hoped, but the ones that we have had have been entertaining, to say the least, and, and productive. First guy I had an interaction with today was wearing a NASA hat. So you know good things are going to happen when the first guy you talk to was wearing a NASA hat. Twitter account, Trollface. That's pretty funny. Trollface. P-H-A-C-E. get something to eat because I'm hungry 
I'd like to find a place that uh, isn't as windy, also. So I think we're going to go find a spot where there's some buildings and we don't have to deal too much with the wind. Appreciate anybody stopping by and hanging out for a little bit. We do have some venues that we're going to hit up tomorrow and Saturday. I'm not sure what's going to go on Sunday. I have, I have some plans on Sunday, so might not be able to make it out, so we might just have to paint the town red the next couple of days. But I just want to encourage everybody just to you know, look into Building 7, you know, just look into some of these things that have been around for a while. And if, you know, Flat Earth isn't your cup of tea right now, then start off small, you know. Orlando Pulse nightclub shooting, Sandy Hook. You know, just some inconsistencies that the establishment has given us in regards to, uh, information that they give us. Got to just stop right in the middle. <laughs> so there are just some irregularities, if you will, about uh, some of the conspiracy theories. And if, if you're not comfortable talking about conspiracy theories and you're not comfortable even just investigating such things, then you really gotta get out of that mindset because you're living in a different reality right now. You're really... You're really... Se I, I mean, to an extent, you're kind of separated from what's going on right now. If you still think the moon landing was real and 9-11 happened the way that we were told, then... You are completely deceived. You are under such mind control and hypnotized by your own personal reality that you can't comprehend to get out of that and look at the earth and situations from a third person perspective. And I think that's what a lot of people get to is they get the God complex and instead of seeing Jesus Christ, or seeing God, or seeing uh, the Creator in a third person perspective, like you see Him over there, people see Him in themselves and they take that too far and they become prideful, arrogant, they want people to idolize them. Narcissism comes into play quite a bit. And if you're not prepared to humble yourself and realize that that's, that's not our role here as humans. We're here to help each other and inform those who are less fortunate to the knowledge that we know. You know, come at them in a loving manner. Sometimes you got to test the spirit and you got to find out, wow, okay, I got to be a little bit more aggressive here. I got to really shake this person awake. <clears throat> and so you just got to use your own discernment on how you go about sharing this information because a lot of this can turn people off. You know? Even asking a, a lady that you work with who's due with. Well then, that's happened a couple of times already, connection issue. We have a clear signal and we're not blocked by anything. We've, we've had no problems recently. So, I don't know. Reset my phone, see if that helps. But I just want to finish my thought and then I'm going to get something to eat. But, you know, I know it's hard. It might, it might take you out of your comfort zone. <clears throat> but, you know, a lady who's 
a month or two away from having our baby, you know, bring it up to her. Say, hey, what do you think about vaccines? Has that ever crossed your mind? You know, and if she comes at you in a manner that is like, well, nothing you tell me is going to change my mind to vaccinate my kids, then, you know, you're kind of between a rock and a hard place because you're not going to be able to convince her. But you can bring it up and, uh, you know, kind of just go from there, see what happens. You know, just kind of plant a seed. You know, little things like that. You know, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? Controversial stuff, but just get the wheels turning. You know, if you really care about these people, you gotta you gotta say controversial things. You gotta bring up touchy subjects and question question our reality. So I'll be back in a little bit, guys. Really appreciate everybody stopping by. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And we'll be back here shortly for some more authentic intent. Bye-bye.